Welcome back to the ZBrush Podcast. I want to thank you all for tuning into ZBrushLive.com and the ZBrush Podcast wherever you're listening. We want to take just a quick moment to talk about ZBrush subscription pricing. And if you follow the link that we have provided in the description, you'll see that we do have a one month price for ZBrush, which is $39.95 a month, or the six month pricing, which is $179.95 a month, or the perpetual license, which is $8.95. And that currently is a one time cost that never expires. So we assume most of you that listen to the podcast already own ZBrush, but if you have friends or people that are interested, in getting into digital sculpting or ZBrush. All of this information can be found by following this link. And for all of you ZBrush podcast listeners, we would greatly appreciate any reviews, comments, or feedback wherever you're watching these episodes or checking out our shows. Also, of course, likes and subscriptions would be greatly appreciated, and we already appreciate all of you that have already done so. If you have been tuning into our content on ZBrushLive.com, we have a very special, unique tool for you using Discord. So in the description of this episode, you'll see a sign-up link, which you can sign up, and you can join the conversation with all the ZBrushers out there that are using Discord. And it's a great way to just communicate and connect with other artists and creative people like yourselves. So we thank all of you ZBrushers out there for your continued support. So that covers all the news and information we had to share with you. This episode, our guest is Maria Panfalova. She is a 3D character artist from Moscow, and we got a chance to sit with her at the ZBrush Summit in 2019, where she was kind of an all-star for this experience. She gave a presentation, which was incredible, and it's available on YouTube. We'll place a link directly in the description. But she also participated in the Sculpt Off. She gave a workshop, and she even made time to give portfolio reviews for other artists, which was incredible. And she's an insanely talented artist. She has a very unique style and way of using ZBrush sculpturally. So we were so glad and I was really happy to talk with her just about her work and how she goes about her process in this episode. You really get a chance to get to know her and how she sort of got started and how she spends her time using ZBrush. So let's get right to it. Here's our episode with Maria Penfalova. Enjoy. Yeah, so you did. You just did your your presentation. Just ended a couple hours ago, and you just had food after doing the after workshop. After portfolio review. Yeah, <laughs> after portfolio review. Yeah, oh my today is gosh. the busiest day. It's the busiest but day. When I when I'm free and I go to the street, it's even more. Uh, it's a lot of people talking. Yes, a lot of yeah. talking, and some of them are very, you know, important people. Uh huh. And I, I'm not sure which which is harder. They're both hard, right? <laughs> Especially when it's meeting new people and you're, you know, I, of course, English is not your first language either. So it takes a lot for you yeah. to have a conversation yeah, with a well, lot of people. Yeah. On this thing, I more know what to do. Yeah. Yeah. And you can just do your presentation. Yeah. With, yeah. Pe with people, you should improvise. You should uh, be funny. Uh huh. <laughs> and it's hard okay. when it's not in Russian. We're not recording Russian. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, yes, we are. Oh, we are. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. We're going. We're just no. It's very smooth. There's very season. smooth. No intro. We don't need to, you know, do all of that. This is way easier, right? Mm, now, now I know <laughs> now that we're recording. About it. Now your I'm brain's going off. <laughs> I know, I should have said no. <laughs> no, but I know what you mean. I mean, everybody has that same response when you're just talking to people and it's it's a lot, even for me in, in English. Like clear English for me is like, it's tough. It's it's exhausting. But doing the, you did the sculpt off and you did, you've done a presentation and you done portfolio reviews and the workshops yeah. and you're doing the podcast with us. Yeah, because you fly to 12 hours here mm -hmm. and since I'm here already you gotta do it all yes and each thing brings you more experience with something else and uh, starting from uh, sculpt off mm. and uh, as as soon as I entered the room where everybody was waiting uh, and so many familiar faces I already knew yeah. when I entered did that make you more comfortable uh, I think so because we have some common subjects and we already on some, uh, you know, have things to talk about. Yes, yes, yeah. that's very good. No, that's that's great. That's good to hear. Because I mean, and do you feel that um, you've actually learned something coming here, doing all of the all the things that you did, and basically um, you making the most out of your trip? Are you happy that you did all of these things uh, now that you're almost done? So far, it's beyond my expectations. Uh, that yeah, everything that I did is uh, gives something uh, to me, and uh, uh, the most important thing is people. Just talking to people, uh, which work I appreciate, mm -hmm. and share thoughts 
Yeah, it's uh, it's it was a really great. I'm that's, so happy I'm here. That's amazing. That's yeah, very thank good. Thank you guys. That yes, of course. Me. It's our pleasure. We we enjoy doing this just to give back to the artists and having you all the artists come here to show to the streamers and the people online that don't get to come here is really great for us. We we love doing this trip and doing this uh, event and it's it's just as uh, amazing for us as it is for you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that I missed uh, most of the speeches because uh, last I was night. I was outside talking to people. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, even the new features of ZBrush. Oh I, yeah. I haven't seen. I have no idea. Oh well, you'll have to. I mean, I think you'll appreciate. We showed some features for a painting. Um, we actually mm. used your model. Ah yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> I, I saw. We the used a, a, a girl on bear, which mm -hmm. is somewhere in there. Uh, but yeah, we showed that off, which. I, I said I apologize when I did it because it was totally different from what you painted. But we just wanted to show off good models and we thank you for letting us use your work, which is amazing. And that's one of the things I wanted to talk about with for you. And we've got your work here, which is uh, it's gorgeous and amazing sculpture work. And it's very unique. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah. I wonder what is your, do you have any particular um, sort of inspiration or types of artists that you follow or that you like? Or is this something that you've sort of developed on your yeah, own? Yeah, I talked a, a little bit about it in a presentation. So I look my direction where I look is more for manga, anime style, mm -hmm. more Asian. I was in a Wonder Festival this year. Yeah. And there's a huge rooms of collectibles, three huge uh, buildings. And uh, WonderCon is huge, very big. The conference, WonderCon. Uh, Wonder. Yeah. Yeah. yeah in Japan. Yeah, very huge. Yeah. And uh, some of them are big studios. Some of them are indie. But indie is uh, even more interesting to look at because their ideas are more free and creative. They're experimenting. Mm -hmm. And I I just uh, took uh, photos of every booth and take it with myself and the style is resonates with me yeah this asian style how they treat details uh how they uh, they really love to use animals as a creature's inspiration mm -hmm. uh, in america it's more like uh, zombie aliens right uh, they uh, use more like that if you see Mo monster palooza mm -hmm. a lot of horror monsters stuff. horror yeah i love monsters but yeah uh but monsters america in america is different from monsters in uh you know, from some popular manga. Yes. Uh, yes, absolutely. It is very different. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, and I see. I mean, you've got uh, you have the the corgi and the cat, which is it reminds me very much of <laughs> Japanese. I mean, a corgi is a very sort of like famous uh, Japanese dog. That uh, it's it's a Shiba. Oh, it's a Shiba. <laughs> Sorry, it looks like a corgi from the from the the small image. But uh, they're both my one of uh, favorites uh, breeds. Yes. <laughs> yes. Do you have one? No, no. Uh, do you want yeah, one? Do dog is too much responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I agree. Not enough. Uh, it doesn't leave you enough time for art. <laughs> yeah, and uh, they they want more many attention. You know. Yes. <laughs> yeah, th the cats are easier to have. They yeah. just sleep nearby you. Yeah. And uh, look how you work. <laughs> yeah, and then they go away when you you know when yeah, you don't give you, them attention. You feed it, and it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a cat? Yeah. Yeah, that's great. So you do. You seem to do a lot of uh, movies and videos. You stream online as well. Ah, uh, not much. Not much. I I like when I stream. I like to keep it on, uh, uh, keep it on uh, for a long time, so anyone can watch it again. Mm. So it's not not like a stream. So I don't talk with chat. I I made some, but it's uh, on Ru in Russian language, mm -hmm. and I uh, saw it more as, as a tutorial than as a stream. Okay. You so have Gumroad I, tutorials, I believe. Gum, yes, Gumroad yeah. I have is about uh, these uh, uh -huh. two guys. Yeah. yeah. And I intentionally choose a quite simple subject with uh, not much details because I wanted to go uh, through a whole process from sculpting to rendering. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to make it too long. Yes. And uh, it's only, uh, I, I say only 12 hours, but it's much. <laughs> that's That's short for in comparison to many other... Um, tutorial yeah, series. Yeah, sometimes they're 50 yeah. hours. I didn't want to yeah. go that's, this way. I, that's good. I think that's smart, especially for simple for somebody who just wants to learn how to do this. Yeah. You need to do something simple. Yeah, it's uh, more, mm, about tools and about... So uh, you don't want to do repetitive stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I understand. You, uh, for your uh, experience, what was your experience like doing the sculpt-off? Sculpt-off? Um, 
Did you enjoy it? You know, I, I didn't worry about that when yeah. I started. Yeah. Uh, but I ha haven't not enough time to prepare because the priority is a speech, then workshop, mm. and then sculpt off. Yeah. And for sculptors, uh, not more fun. Not not enough time left for prepare. Yeah. Uh, Which is good, yeah. I think. It makes it more creative. Yeah, but because you don't want to do it twice. Yeah. Which some people do, yeah. but I like, I appreciate not doing it twice and just trying to see what you come up with in three hours. Yeah, right? maybe you can do it twice, but uh, there should be some time uh, in between. Mm. So you forget about how you do it uh, and maybe you do it better. Mm, take a break spot. and then come back. Mm, that would be a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Because it's, do you ever uh, sculpt for one night and you, you like what you see? Mm -hmm. And then you go to sleep and you wake up the next day and you hate what you see? Uh, usually it's the opposite. Yeah? You, you don't like when you sculpt it. Yeah. You see it's... Uh... Yeah, but sometimes when you wake up, you see some obvious mistakes. You, you see mistakes, notice. you see problems. You might. I, I experience where I'll, I'll think I like what I see. I'll, I'll go until I'm happy. And then I come back and I see it and I see all the flaws and all the problems mm -hmm. just from taking a break. And not looking at it for a few hours even makes a big difference. Yeah. 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 Well, the uh, the sculpt off is uh, interesting because it's not many people get a chance to experience it. You're one of a few of the artists that we've had here, and everybody. Some people stress, but you seem to not stress at all. Uh, you know, uh, it's we we talked about it with uh, guys outside. Yeah. Uh, so some people are stressed about communication, and some people are stressed about showing how they work mm -hmm. and uh, I am serious about communication yeah. and when I sit in front of ZBrush it's like I'm a fish in the water <laughs> <laughs> I feel that I'm at home uh -huh. so I can do it, what I uh, do every day mm -hmm. so it's more that's amazing and how long have you been using ZBrush uh, I started to learn 3D in 2010 okay uh, I was in a third year of uh, university uh, I studied psychology. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. And now you do ZBrush. <laughs> yeah. And uh, in Russia, a lot of artists, uh, a big amount of artists are self-taught. Mm. Maybe because our school situation is uh, different. Yeah. We have a very, uh, how to say, this strict schools with a very serious approach to how to draw figure, how to draw, how to use tools. Mm -hmm. And they're very strict uh, that you should follow it exactly how they teach you mm -hmm. and um, yeah uh, I was pity that I didn't go didn't go to art university instead of psychology but later I uh, realized that maybe it's a good thing that I didn't mm. because sometimes it's too hard to switch from academic approach to uh, more free, you know, concept uh, yeah. industry, CG industry, you should be very fl flexible and fluid. And uh, after this experience, when teaching are uh, telling exactly what you need to do, you're having a hard time to switch to a more creative approach. Mm, I see. Yeah, I can understand that. And it is very different here compared to Russia, it seems like, for education. and But it's good. I mean, you've clearly figured out a lot of this in your own way and you're doing really well and uh, you also have that degree in psychology if you ever need it which I'm sure that you might be able to introduce psychology into maybe your art in some way shape or form um, in in terms of psychology there's one subject I really like to consider when I do art is um, the subject of archetypes mm. uh, it's a Jungian psychology yeah uh, how uh, each uh, culture have uh, its own mythology, and uh, there's a lot of similarities in between. Uh, you, you guys in Los Angeles, you uh, make movies based on Campbell. Mm. You know this uh, Joseph, Joseph Campbell. Joseph Campbell. Yeah. Yes. Uh, he wrote. Oh, sorry, not the role. <laughs> he wrote a book. Uh, yeah. Uh, a man with a hundred faces. Mm -hmm. like that. Yes, that's right. Yeah, it's the subject I really uh, like uh, to explore and I think it's uh, a big uh, source of uh, uh, about storytelling mm. what subject to choose because you may choose some animal and uh, it can be just animal mm -hmm. but uh, some animal have uh, particular traits and uh, for example the fox 
is uh, sneaky. Yes, yes. And uh, it have some character traits mm -hmm. uh, within or all the snake, cultures. Or yes, the yeah, snake. Yeah. Uh, seducive. The snake is seducive. Mm -hmm. uh, it's from Bible, but not only from Bible. When uh, other cultures as other well. Other cultures, uh, yeah. same thing. And uh, yeah, you can bring some meaning to uh, characters that you make. And yeah, with storytelling, it's a really great thing. And mm. um, I, I like when um, to listen to some lectures when people analyze modern uh, movies, mm. uh, how they use this classical myth yeah. to make the movie good. Yes. Uh, like Lion King, yeah. I saw a lecture of uh, Jordan Peterson, mm -hmm. how he analyzed uh, and you you look at it differently. And one guy, I don't remember his name, but he's also in a CG. He analyzed Terminator 2. Yeah. It was so fun to watch. It's on YouTube. And yeah, YouTube is a good educational source. You of know, course. For, for such I, things. I'm sure you get, you get so much out of that now, especially for, I mean, this is why we do this, having podcasts and just conversations about these things that you might find out information that you don't get somewhere else, even in university or education, you mm -hmm. don't get some of this information. And, you know, people like you who see things through a different lens than other people, um, you explore things in a different way that maybe another, another artist does. And what, we, what I love about your work is you, you do focus on storytelling. You know, you have some element of storytelling in your pieces, which... Yeah, yeah not, I try to. <laughs> it's very good. It's very good. And, and I'm sure that you talked a lot about this in your workshop. Uh, about storytelling, not so much. Uh, this guy with a um, creature around him. Uh, the the nose? Uh, oh, no, this no, no, no. Uh, this, uh, uh, oh, this one, yeah, the youth yeah. eater. Uh, I was really... Um, it was curious to see how people differently uh, understand the meaning of it. Mm. Why he's uh, trapped in a creature. Mm. Uh, it, I, I called it youth eater, but uh, it's uh, one of one way to... Uh, analyze it mm. how you can uh, uh, how you can explain it some people told it's uh, uh, how when you go to the industry mm. you know yeah. when you get a yeah. job oh, yeah, for sure. da daily it's, job you're taking away your it's taking away your life yeah, and, you're spending 16 hours a day sometimes so someone tells when you get into uh, uh, family responsibilities you mm. know same thing you could can interpret be this so many ways i mean your description says when you're not aware that you're being eaten alive. Yeah. And I it, think of a thousand things. It can just be that alone. in many situations. Yeah. yeah and I, I like uh, I like when there's a lot of ways to interpret. Yeah. It. So do you spend, when you create a piece, do you think about what meaning is going to be behind the piece that you're going to create before you do it? Or do you come up with that as um, you're designing? I can, but I try not to focus on it too deeply. Not I'm not trying to message something in particular. Uh, but many of these uh, views, it's not... Uh, I, I mentioned that I was inspired by a book. Uh, mm, interesting. Oh, yes. Uh, Confessions, Confessions of a Mask by yeah. Yukio Mishima. Yeah, and the story was there that as a guy was really am amazed by... Uh, young guys dying mm. and there is a um, um, painting uh, how a guy is uh, arrows uh, like he's uh, killed by arrows mm, interesting and but he's so beautiful and young but he's killed mm. and how he uh, loves this concept and he's a gay guy mm, interesting. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah yeah but uh, I I got more into that after that and looked for more pictures. There are some photographers so uh, who also love the subject. So I took some photo uh, photographs and paintings that have similar subject of death of young uh, guys. Mm, interesting. Yeah, and I wanted to, to do something by my own. So the story isn't mine. I took it from. You were inspired by that yes. to create something yes, else. Yes, but I just uh, changed the setting, changed the uh, things that killing, mm, you know, yeah. and it's another piece. Right. No, it's a beautiful piece. It truly is. And this, uh, do you, could you define what the creature is? Is it, it looks almost squid-like, but it, it's almost your yeah, own design. The good thing about these creatures like that, that you can give it uh, to it any shape you want, mm. because it's, um, it have tentacles and uh, you can place it whatever, 
Uh, so I try to place it the way that they together looks like a triangle shape. Mm, interesting, I see. So yeah, it's uh, the creatures like that uh, serves w really well with the composition. Mm. Uh, yeah, Do they're you study, very fluid. Mm -hmm. It's very fluid. You study composition. Did you learn composition through school or did you learn this I watch, afterwards? I watch a lot of tutorials and yeah. videos. Yeah. Uh, one is uh, on top of my mind is um, a new Masters Academy uh, mm. website and they have um, Glenn Vilpu okay. who's giving lectures about uh, compositions and he just takes a lot of classical images and explains why they placed the characters this way. And he does a lot of lines showing how uh, the ca character leads into another character. Because uh, in a Renaissance age, they uh, do a lot of uh, compositions that have many figures and they yeah. all need to fit together. Right. And when you just watch how he explains the artist decision um, one by one, you add a little into your mind yep. and yeah, it uh, starts to make more sense to you yeah. after some time. But it's it doesn't like he he told you the secret and oh, I know that now and I go to create. No, it's like you adding uh, drop by drop mm -hmm. and uh, it's setting up and after some times uh, you finally can take something yeah. from it. Yeah, that's that's amazing. And it's it seems to be a very classical sort of way of thinking. Like classically trained artists. I don't know if you talked to did you speak with uh, Joe Mena? Do you know Joe Mena? Yeah. 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 Did you speak with him? Yeah, yeah. I, I, he he yeah. spent a I know he spent a great deal of time yeah, learning he was sculpture in Russia. In Russia. Yeah. Yes. Which I forget which academy. Did do you remember? Which um, uh, sculpting academy he... Uh, he called it... Uh, it's in St. Petersburg. I'm not very... Okay. Uh, because I'm from Moscow. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, he called it... Uh, like uh, there, there was a sculptor Muhina mm. in, in Russia and some academies that are uh, linked to her. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, there's some even difference between Moscow and St. Petersburg, how they approach uh, how to teach. Interesting. Know? So there's even slightly differences there between the two cities? Uh, yes, between cities, yeah. because uh, there are some artists who inspired uh, one school mm. and uh, they look up to this artist and another look up to another artist. Sure, uh, that makes sense. I mean, you see that here. I mean, even a Noman might teach a certain way that a different another mm. school might teach another way. And there are different sort of schools of thought. Yeah, and uh, th when you go self-taught, uh, you grab and if, from everywhere you, you filter it you yeah. if you don't like you don't take it right yeah and you grab only the ideas that you like which may be good and may be bad it can be tricky yeah, yeah you can go wrong di direction mm -hmm. so this is why i mix like i use both uh tutorials and also streams mm. uh, because uh, streams and podcast also yeah uh, because tutorials is more about tools how to just how to do it yeah, they they teach you directly, and streams uh, or podcasts helping you to uh, make decisions yeah. and choose the direction where to go next. Yeah. Uh, because you listen to a lot of stories, and they telling you how some person was disappointed in something, and you try to relate it to you. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, so on that, I guess on that topic, since that's what we're doing, mm -hmm. do you did you find when you were training, when you were going through and educating yourself, what were the what were the challenges that you had to overcome? Did you have any um, like learning sculpture? Did you have any um, training in clay sculpture um, or any time of sculpture before ZBrush? I think the way I went was. Uh, I try to propagate this way to people, but it's not the only way, but this is how I do, how I did. Yeah. So I knew that there's a 3D industry and you can um, do some uh, Maya work, 3DS Max work. I, I didn't know about the brush uh, much at the time, mm -hmm. uh, but my expectation was so low. I was ready to take any job, mm. so I just uh, didn't... Uh, go to the characters directly. I just learned how to model uh, like hard surface stuff and yeah. I try to achieve realism first. Mm -hmm. uh, because when you try to achieve realism, you have a idealistic example how you should do it. Yeah. And uh, you try to repeat it. Yeah. And I saw that uh, because um, 
a friend of mine is uh, studying in Gnomon. Mm-hmm. No, Gnomon. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I have a hard time saying it too. <laughs> <laughs> and she, she did a task with the model um, bar. Okay. So it's a real bar, but she tries to replicate right. everything. Uh, there. It's hard to replicate perfectly. Yeah, but you know, they they just uh, started to study, and she did the task well, and I did really similar task. I uh, modeled a room, and I tried to uh, make it realistic, mm-hmm. uh, everything. So this st- stuff you can do. Uh, it's easier to do than cha- than characters. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's more technical, right? Yes. It's more about learning which buttons to press, being able to see it and understand that it looks real, know that it's good, and know when it's not good. But with characters, it's more. There's more to yeah, it. There's a, there's a lot more on characters, yeah. and you can do like guns, uh, props, and it's easier. You just uh, figure out how to make modeling, texturing, UVs, mm-hmm. and rendering. Yeah. But you're not uh, worried about anatomy right. and design, not so much or because composition, you're using... Composition of just arranging a scene even, like having a character that has a good pose and good yes. form and all of that. Yes, you can just, if you're not sure about composition, because when you do a room, it's also about composition yeah. because you need to place uh, objects. But you can just use a photo and mm-hmm. it will help you. Right. Yeah. And... Uh, so first I did this stuff, and it uh, helped me to be hired to the first studio. And yeah, I, I actually went to the school in um, Russia, but it was intensive class. It's um, five days. Mm-hmm. Uh, my teacher, Vadim Barzenka, uh, he, uh, he, he helped me to get my first job in... Uh, uh, one and a half year after I uh, taught with him. Wow, that's very quick. That's very fast. One and a half years? Uh, one and a half, uh, more or less, yes. Yeah. 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 And this was, uh, where was this job? Uh, in, in Moscow, Russia. In Moscow, okay. Yeah. For a studio or for? He, he worked in an animation studio and I, I didn't even consider working in an animation studio. I was thinking like maybe. A, um, architectural mm. and or advertisement. I, I was just think it's easier yeah. to get. And yeah, and the first job of animation studio, I was very, I, I, I am very grateful that yeah. he invited me. Uh, but it's not like I, I was teaching and he invited, but I did some portfolio. I did this uh, images uh, with a hard surface and re- uh, realistic render. Mm. Okay. And it really helped me to start. Oh, that's amazing. So then, not I guess not having an expect. I mean, you were expecting to go to advertising and maybe in architecture, but animation was maybe. Is that what kind of led you down this path to start being introduced to character modeling and yeah, character well, sculpture? Yeah, when you get into animation, you see that there are two ways you can go. You mm-hmm. can go to locations. Uh, or if you are a modeler, mm-hmm. and you can go to characters. So we had the division. Yeah. But both of us were using ZBrush, and one of my first tasks was to do Chinese lion. Oh, wow. And Chinese lion is very about gesture. Uh-huh. I was talking a lot about gesture on a presentation. Yeah. And, uh, and the cool thing about Chinese lion, it's uh, not, accurate, uh, any, not accurate anatomy. So if you don't know anatomy, that's okay. Yeah, it's actually you, better. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. So you, you can still do it really well, and not knowing anatomy, but just uh, if you just get the gesture concept mm-hmm. and try to do this S shapes or uh, C shapes, yes, yeah. uh, to do this twisting. Uh, and I watched accurately to references and uh, copied, and it at the beginning it helped me to get into this uh, concept of gesture and also at the same time I went to gesture drawing it was in a building nearby so mm-hmm. after it was really intense time I, I still studied at university as a psychologist oh wow and uh, you're doing this as well after after it I went to the, the work <laughs> that's a lot and I worked <laughs> on the um, cartoon movies and after that, I went to gesture drawing sessions. Yeah. And yeah. You have very good work ethic. <laughs> very good work ethic. To, just to go from that to that, to turn your brain off from this and then go to this is a lot. 
Yeah, but psychology was uh, pretty chill. It's not yeah. like um, my brother now studying uh, mathematics. Oh, really? And he's so busy. Yeah. And we, we and uh, on the latest uh, years of university, you work on a diploma and you are not so much busy. Right. That makes sense. That makes sense. And I, I do see with a lot of your work, there is a really great, I mean, you have a great combination of gesture and anatomy. I mean, but clearly you're, you're kind of willing to, with some of your stylized pieces with, say, creatures, mm -hmm. you're playing around with form and muscle form, but you're, you're sort of gesturing uh, just motion almost with the sculpture, actually pushing on the surface and doing a lot of handwork, which really shows through your work. But then you do have anatomy pieces of, you know, yeah. the very, like, scientific almost breakdowns, yeah. is, which is very, very cool and very amazing. Um, yeah, I try to use it together and try to exaggerate a little bit uh, the muscles with uh, this uh, gesture idea. Yeah. And uh, um, many people, uh, and it's quite obvious that I'm inspired by Beth Kavanagh. Mm. And she she does a lot of stuff uh, like uh, make the anatomy stronger mm. by these uh, clay strokes. Mm. And following strokes, uh, she follows strokes the anatomy forms and how she combines bones with muscles, mm. like how she make uh, bones really sharp, yeah. and how uh, the sharp so bones... So like areas in like an elbow yes, where yes. you have like a sharp edge. Yes, for beginners it's my very common uh, feedback mm. that people pay less attention to bones and make everything too soft, Right. and you want to combine sharp uh, areas with soft areas, yeah. and this is how it Yeah, looks. like you have collarbone you have hard clean edges and then you have soft shoulders but you have these yeah sort of like, in this joint you yeah. have a lot of stuff uh, yeah. acromion there's a lot the going on in there you have your traps and you have deltoid going in then you have chest muscles going across yeah. with delta it's interesting that girls usually have this shoulder bone very very pronounced mm, yeah and uh delta is not su such a right so it's more of a an angle uh, yeah, in the yeah. bottom. So yeah. at the top you see more uh, shoulder uh, joint, uh, shoulder bone instead of delta muscle. Yeah. If the girl is lean, mm. and uh, people uh, don't notice that and they ignore the shoulder and mm. they do only delta. Yeah, right. No, that's good. that's good advice. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. very good advice. Anatomy is very challenging to do, um, and it's you seem to you seem to be able to uh, sort of translate many you know, male and female figure forms, but then a lot of creature design too and character design in, in, uh, with animals and everything. So it's, it, it, it's clear that you just have an, an understanding of these things. And I'm sure that your workshop was very helpful to the artist that- Yeah, I hope you know, so. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I, without a doubt, I know that it was. Yeah, this uh, one Oh, this a, is wild. <laughs> yeah, this has a time, time lapse uh, at the bottom. Yeah, you can open it. So you like to use I see you do a lot of uh, clay brush. Do you like the clay brush, clay tubes? Uh, clay build up. Clay build up? Yeah. H polish at all? Yeah, my tip to people that reduce the stroke on lazy mouse. Yeah. And you won't have squares. Mm. That's, uh, right. Many people do it like that. Right, but that's a good that's a good way because I if you don't like the squares, if you don't like the texture, you can the clay brush just smooths it out. It's softer, oh, right? But the clay so tubes brush. gives you that. Uh, sort of like square-like texture, so it's different ways of using the same kind of brush. Uh, and people like prefer different, you know, it's not like there's the best brush, but uh, people prefer to go differently. Yeah. Some people use only clay, yeah. some people use only clay tubes, mm -hmm. and clay build-up. Right. Yeah, and uh, some people use clay build-up, but they decrease Focal shift. Yeah. So the square alpha is softer. Right. And some people do what they do. They took the the square alpha and blur it in Photoshop. Ah. Oh, so this, they soften this, it up and make it just a without the hard edges. Yeah, but yeah. the but I agree that having some alpha uh, helps around or square. Yeah. Uh, I I don't know how it works, but somehow it makes experience better. Mm. So for standard, I also put alpha. Yeah. I took I took it from uh, Sakaki. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Which is, I mean, the the Damien standard brush is just you know a modification of the standard brush with an alpha. You know, to get that very like clean line, those like hard grooves, 
And taking one brush and just adding an alpha to it can change it all, which doesn't make a big difference. And yes, yeah. sometimes, sorry. No, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes people show tweaks how they change the yeah. brush. And, and we love it. Yes, yeah. you saw my z by the effect. Yeah. yeah. And try to implement it into yeah. your toolset. Yeah. set. No, I nerd out over things like that. <laughs> I love just minute changes, like little little tips like that make all the difference in just the way that you work. And a lot of artists seem to use maybe four or five brushes, but making slight modifications to each one can sort of create your own style in a way, if you sort of work in a different way and experiment with different settings and things like that. How yeah. many other, uh, do you tend to use just basic sculpting brushes or you do any hard surface modeling in ZBrush at uh, all? I, I have some that are very popular among internet, like Orb Cracks. It's very, oh, yeah, very, Orb Cracks. very popular. Yep, yep, yeah. I have those. And both for hard surface and organic stuff too. Yeah. Yeah, so some, some like that I have, uh, and I added some. Some have just uh, some particular alphas. Yep, yeah, I have some on my toolset, but I didn't make them um, by myself. Most of them, I just took it from another artist. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. No, that's great. A lot of artists do that. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of brushes in ZBrush too. You know, I don't I don't know how much you experiment with the existing brushes, yeah, but and even because spiral of brushes and <laughs> yeah, all kinds of crazy ones. Yeah, because of that you need to watch uh, someone uh, who to tell you about brushes. Yeah, yeah, I know for sure. And that's hard because I mean not not a lot of people seem to experiment with some of them. Like it's, a lot of people use a lot of the same ones like move brush, standard brush clay brushes, um, Damien standard brush, um, you know, the clay tubes, H polish, snake hook, snake hook, snake hook is a really good one. Uh, and that seems to be, that gets you very, very far. But then there's things like orb cracks and people that make their own brushes and there's all kinds of I, libraries. I, I talk pretty often and uh, at the assignment I, I talk about in a portfolio review. Um, what can really help uh, with uh, brushes and technical stuff is uh, is if it's too hard for you to sculpt it on the surface, if you detach it, if you break it up, mm. it it might be easier. Yeah, work on separate parts. Yes. Yeah. I, for example, I did it for um, face uh, when you do plain pla planner face. Yeah. You know, everything is uh, polished. Yeah. Uh, each plane. Yeah. Uh, I just broke it up into separate meshes. Oh, that's smart. And assembled together like a constructor. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, and it's easier to handle each shape separately and then pull pull it together. Yeah. So a lot of artists seem to be doing that now, where you, if you look at a drawing even of the figure, mm -hmm. you can draw like simple primitive objects, even circles, cylinders, you know, circles, cylinders. Yeah, it's very similar to yeah, that. Yeah, just sort of deconstructing yeah. it and not seeing it as one whole piece. And it's easier to move around and manipulate and... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If, if the subject is too complicated uh, for you to understand, you just disassemble it mm. and assemble it back. Yeah, that's very great. It's, it's uh, the way how we learn. Yeah. Usually, yeah, no, that's very good. So now that you are, um, so you work in Moscow, in animation, video games. Yeah. Do you currently work for a studio? Uh, there's not one particular studio. Uh, Are you freelance? I, yeah, freelance. Okay, so you work freelance for multiple studios. Yes, the okay. project is uh, uh, can be one month, two months. Two months is pretty average. Yeah. Uh, the l length of a project. Yeah. And mostly doing character work? Um, is that what you focus on? Yeah, mostly characters. Uh, one of uh, my most common clients, my uh, most stable client, you know, yeah. is uh, Axis uh, Studios. Okay. Uh, I When I started, uh, when I switched from a studio to France, it was uh, 2016. And uh, how, how it was, yeah. I... Um, I worked on a project that was closed, and uh, they moved me into another project that wasn't so the same level of fun. Oh, you know? uh, okay. And uh, why? Why was that? Um, very different styles. Mm. It was a game company, and they did a, a different sort of object uh, objects projects. Yeah. Yeah, and at the same time, I finished my character um, Blade Dancer Girl, the Dark Elf Girls, mm. with two blades. That's a beautiful piece. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, and after that, I had some offers from uh, studios uh, to freelance for them, and mm -hmm. Axis was the one that okay. uh, offered me. And it was a good timing that at the same time uh, there was project switching in studio where I worked. Yeah. So I decided to I can uh, give it a try. Yeah. So this is how I switched, and I was re really lucky that uh, the studio Axis uh, was the one that I started to work with. Uh, because they're very organized and my experience was very smooth. Yeah. And uh, yes, as a, as a first uh, serious freelance job, it uh, was a really good choice. That's amazing. No, oh, that's very good. This, Some of these pieces that you have um, in this sort of style, I guess in in these studios, are these, is this, do you find that this is a style that you end up designing in or is it, no. All kinds of <laughs> totally different things. It's uh, mostly it's different. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so this is things that you do in your personal work. Mostly, yes. Yeah. Yes. Do you do you are you maybe seeking to find a way to do this uh, uh, more often, maybe you know, professionally? You, you know, when I talk with people about it, how they want to find a better client who fit uh, more. Everyone, everyone is struggling with that. Sure. Everyone wants to get a better client who uh, and do exactly what they love. But I, I think it's uh, always will be a struggle. You always want something better. Yeah, and, of course. And uh, the work is just work. And yeah. there's a lot of routine stuff, a lot of repetitive stuff. And you just, I just treat the work like it's a thing I need to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For a living. Right. Yeah. And uh, it's still fun to some degree. I mean, you're not working in a coal mine or, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's still, exactly. it's still creating this kind of stuff, which, you know, has its, his benefits. Yeah, for work it's usually uh, typos. Yeah. And uh, I uh, most often have some concept, uh, okay. which was given to me to do. Sometimes uh, they ask me to do some improve the design. Okay. Or elaborate the yeah. design. Yeah, it's. Um, I'm scared to do that. Yeah. But I tr try my best. Is that a new do. thing for you? Um, yeah, it, it's getting a bit, uh, more and more recently. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the well, that's good, I think. Yes. So that's, that's moving, progressing in your career to a place where yeah. they uh, want you to we, revise. We, we see it like in future. I'm not sure that it will be a division like that. You draw and then someone else sculpt. Yeah. Maybe it will combine uh, some way mm -hmm. and uh, one person will do both. both. Yeah. Hopefully, I think that, I mean, and you do, I have seen in your artwork, you do have um, a lot of 2D paintings, 2D drawings as well. Not, 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 a, not, not a lot, not, but you not have a, some. Not as much as I would want it to do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this takes a lot of time. And I, I know that, I mean, for me, since I started using ZBrush, which was ZBrush 3, mm. uh, however long that, uh, that is, I, I used to draw all the time, and now I don't draw at all. Because mm. if I'm going to spend time on artwork, I want to go in and I just, I prefer sculpture now and modeling that way. But I feel the same way. It just not being mm. able to, not setting enough time to draw and just sketch, you know. Yeah, the, the worst thing is, so when you draw for some time, you see some improvement. Mm. And then you are busy with something else and yeah. you stop to draw. And when you come back to it, you see that you lost some mm, yes. abilities that you had already. Yeah. And you need to re we get, uh, how to say, uh, uh, get it again. Right, And right. yeah, the consistency about drawing and sculpting both is uh, very, very important. But yeah. with the sculpting, to be consistent, because it's a part of my job, it's, uh, uh, I'm okay to be consistent with sculpting, but drawing it's another thing. Yeah, I understand. So for you then, I guess, moving forward, and in, in, I'm just curious too, before I go on to that topic, but in Moscow, there's you have animation games companies how many are there a lot of people in moscow using zbrush sure yeah sure yeah uh, before our station had a search like you can uh pick the country russia and yeah. see how many people are from russia yeah on our station oh, com wow. comparing to us oh interesting yeah i've never actually done that before um, america had uh, as i remember it it uh, was like 50,000, mm -hmm. like that. And Russia has less, but not much less. Not much less. Mm, yeah. So there's quite a lot, actually. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Maybe we should do the ZBrush Summit in Moscow. 
Yeah, we have some conference and yeah, yeah some yeah. of them are really great. Yeah. Do you go to a lot of conferences? Um, mm, I used to go a lot, and now I go less. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's you're busy now with work and you know, and also, I mean, you coming here to the summit is. We're glad to have artists like you from so far away to come here just because uh, this is something that, like you've mentioned, the, this, the United States doesn't have necessarily the same style. So it's mm. unique for us to see things like this. And it's mm. actually very inspiring, I think, for a lot of people. Because like you said, you we tend to just make what we see. And if all you see are the same monsters and the same styles and the same designs... Oh, no, I think uh, Americans... Uh the artists you have uh, a lot of very inspiring examples to me. It's not like I mentioned that I am inspired by Asia, but yeah. it's what I'm picking. But I I look at American sculptors also. Mm, interesting. Very, Simon Lee's. Uh, oh, Simon Lee. Yes. And he he posted so often to Instagram, and I always check and uh -huh. see more <laughs> and more. Uh -huh. yeah. Who else do you follow uh, that you can think of? Uh, I mentioned in a presentation I was. Colocontes mm. is also a traditional sculptor. Yes. And I, I've tried to follow a lot of traditional sculptors because on our station they're not often. Yes, uh, right. Works. There's more digital artists in our yes. station. Yes, Instagram is a place for uh, people who is outside CG. Yeah. And you can uh, go more widely yeah. uh, for inspirations. Yes, for sure. That's a good point. And yeah, and this, do you, uh, and Zebra Central is... ZBrush only a lot of just ZBrush artists, but there are a lot of different people. I mean, Z Long, for a lot of us here, having Z Long from China is amazing because he's got such a deep um, sort of uh, history and uh, sort of understanding of just classical um, sort of artwork in China, yeah. which is very unique to see for us. And uh, we would love to see more artists from other places. But yeah, it's Instagram is it's funny how art communities exist in one place and sort of trying to follow people in different places is. It's almost uh, it's, it's kind of a challenge to to figure out places to get inspiration from. Yeah, uh, Andrew Andrew Kraus. Uh, who, oh, Andrew Kraus, yeah. Yeah, who won he, the award last night. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he have a workshop in Las Vegas. Yes. And uh, I watched. Uh, you know, I I found his uh, works too. Uh -huh. And uh, he have a video on YouTube how he makes a girl uh, with yeah. anatomy features, very uh -huh. detailed, mm -hmm. and how he adds muscles and on top of uh, smoothing everything. Yeah. And the video have music, and I watched it. I'm so, you know, I'm so in love with it. Yeah. It's a very beautiful video. I recommend and it's you beautiful to watch music. It. Yeah, beautiful yes. music. Yes, yeah. it's not just a a scientific video of muscles. It's a creative sort of thing to watch. Yeah. yeah, and uh, you have a lot of uh, people like that making workshops uh, in the area where they live. Yeah, he used to, um, Andrew used to do his workshop here uh -huh. once a year. He would do it in the Noman Hangar, and there would be maybe 30 people, and it would be for three days, and he'd have a, a model in the center, and they'd have a ring of people all around mm. on Cintiqs and ZBrush, and they would go through one whole male figure or a female figure. Oh, cool. And it was amazing. But now he's he's so busy now. He, doing it in Vegas is um, kind of the next big thing for him, but he's amazing. Yeah, it's what I really miss living in Russia. Yeah. Is that I, co I can't go to their workshops. I can, but it's um, yeah. more difficult. Sure. Yeah, but uh, the, you have so much... Uh, Things like that that you can't get on the internet. Yeah, you know? sure, absolutely. <laughs> well, I mean, you put out, uh, I've noticed in your art station, you do have a lot of, you have links to your gum roads and your videos. Um, do you have any other things that you'd like to share with people that are watching or any places? Now's the time if you want to. Uh, like if you go to the about section, I believe you do have, um, uh, like you have yeah. links to. This, this stuff is uh, usually, uh, you know, some websites asking you to make a make-off of some work yeah. and I don't want it to be lost and I just put everything here. Oh, I see. Oh, that's great. So Art Spotlight, uh, uh, tips of quick 3D sculpts, yeah. those kinds of things. Yeah, some interviews and this Russian streams at the bottom. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, so you do those streams on YouTube. Yes. Yeah, 
Yeah. They're six hours long. Uh, wow. Many of them. <laughs> That's very long. That's amazing, though. Uh, you just need to increase your speed of uh, video. <laughs> right. Just turn it on times three. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, I don't want to take too much of your time, but thank you so much for talking about your well, artwork. Thank you and for having me. Yes. No, it was a true pleasure. And uh, today's the last day. Uh, so we have, I think, one more presentation, and I guess you go home tonight or tomorrow. No, we have a, we spend a week after. Oh, that's good. We want to go around Los Angeles. Uh, we're first time here. That's good. You should. Yeah, you've been doing way too much here for us already, so <laughs> you should enjoy the city for a little while. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for coming on. It was a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Yeah.